I run clinics to fully inform patients about their medication and about side effects. So in this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about dapagliflozin, specifically what it does to the body and about its potential side effects. And I'll also give you advice on what to do if you do get any problems. Now, this is especially important if you are about to start dapagliflozin or you're already established on it. I'm also going to answer some commonly asked questions in my clinics, which include, can dapagliflozin cause thrush? What is fornia's gangrene? And what's the risk of getting diabetic ketoacidosis? Now, these are really important questions that you should be fully informed about when making a decision about taking this medication. So this video will help you to understand more about dapagliflozin and allow you to make an informed decision about taking it. So let's get started. So what is dapagliflozin? It's known as an SGLT2 inhibitor, which stands for sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor and is mainly used to treat type 2 diabetes. Now, SGLT2 inhibitor medicines are sometimes known as gliflozins or flozins, and these include dapagliflozin, which we will talk about today, but there is also canagliflozin, empagliflozin, and atugliflozin. Now, these medicines were initially developed to treat people with diabetes as they lower blood glucose by increasing the amount of glucose in the urine. But they have added benefits that include protecting the kidneys if you have chronic kidney disease by helping to slow the rate at which the condition gets worse. And in protecting the heart by reducing the risk of the heart getting weaker and help symptoms such as tiredness. So this reduces the risk of heart failure and heart attacks in people at most risk. So how do you take it? You take dapagliflozin any time of day. Just try to take it at the same time every day. Swallow the tablets whole with a drink of water. Don't chew them and you can take them with or without food. But if you're taking dapagliflozin with metformin, it's a good idea to take it with food or just after and this is because metformin is more likely to affect your stomach. Now, I do have a video on metformin, which I'll leave a link for below. Now, what are the common side effects? Number one, thrush. Now, this is a common side effect and is one of the most frequently asked about questions in my clinic. The SGLT2 inhibitor medicines increase the glucose in your urine so there is an increased risk of infection such as thrush around the vagina and penis. However, this is easily treated and your healthcare provider can give you advice if irritation or itching occurs in these areas. To reduce the risk of this happening, my advice would be to wash your genital area with warm water using non-perfumed soap and avoiding wearing tight underwear which will reduce your risk of getting thrush. Number two, low blood sugar. Now, usually this only occurs in people with diabetes if SGLT2 inhibitors are used together with other diabetic medicines. Now, early warning signs of low blood sugar include feeling hungry, trembling or shaking, sweating, confusion or difficulty concentrating. Now, my advice would be to tell your doctor straight away so they can reduce the dose of your other diabetic medicines. And if you are taking insulin, never stop taking insulin altogether and seek advice from your healthcare provider. Number three, dehydration. So these medicines increase your urine volume so cause you to pee more than normal. So this may cause dehydration. So you could get symptoms such as a very dry or sticky mouth, feel very thirsty, sleepy or tired, or you may not be peeing or peeing very little and you have a fast heartbeat. My advice to prevent dehydration 
would be to drink plenty of fluids when you feel dehydration symptoms and also for your urine to become a pale and clear color. Number four, back pain. Now, if you get sudden, unexpected back pain, don't try and treat this yourself. If you also get symptoms such as a high temperature or feel cold and shivery or get a burning feeling when peeing with pain in your back or side or blood in your urine, contact your doctor. It might be a sign of a urinary tract infection or bladder infection. Number five, a mild skin rash. Now, if this happens and is bothersome, it may help to take an antihistamine. Now, check with your healthcare provider to see what type is suitable for you or if the rash doesn't go away or gets worse. And number six, you could get a serious allergic reaction. Now, these are not all the side effects of dapagliflozin. For a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. So what are the uncommon side effects? Number one, an increase of acid in the blood. Now this is called diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA for short and is another commonly asked about question in my clinic. Now SGLT2 inhibitors may cause certain acids called ketones to build up in the blood and this is what happens when your body starts to run low on insulin. Now, this is a rare event in people with diabetes and is extremely rare in people treated with SGLT2 inhibitors without diabetes and can happen even when your blood glucose is normal. So signs of DKA can include feeling or being sick, feeling very thirsty, feeling confused or unusually tired, having stomach pain, breath that smells fruity like pear drop sweets or nail varnish remover, or breathing that's more deep or fast. The risk of DKA is increased if you don't eat for long periods, if you become dehydrated, if you reduce your insulin dose too quickly, you drink too much alcohol or you are unwell. Please seek medical advice from your healthcare provider before starting any new diet, particularly a very low carbohydrate diet, also called ketogenic diet, as these can increase the ketones in the blood. Now, DKA is a serious health condition, and if you believe you are developing symptoms of DKA, then please seek urgent medical help and tell them about the medication you are taking. Number two, Fornia's gangrene. This is an extremely rare infection of the genitalia or the area between the genitals and the anus. Please seek urgent medical attention. If you experience any severe pain, tenderness, redness or swelling in this area and you feel unwell or have a fever, this is because there has been reports of Fornia's gangrene and it can be potentially life-threatening infection that requires urgent medical attention. Number three, foot disease. Now, if you've been told that you have a foot that is at risk, confirm with your doctor if you should start or remain on an SGLT2 inhibitor medicine. If you have an active foot ulcer or a circulatory problem in your leg, you should stop these medicines. Now, what are the cautions with other medicines? There are some medicines that may increase the effects of dapagliflozin. This can make you more likely to get side effects. So tell your doctor if you're taking any of these medicines before you start taking dapagliflozin. Medicines that make you pee more, called diuretics like fruzamide, these can increase your risk of dehydration and lower your blood pressure. If you're taking medicines for high blood pressure, like Ramipril or Amlodipine. If you're taking other medicines that can lower your blood pressure, including some antidepressants, nitrates, baclofen, 
tamsulosin, co-carol-dopa or levodopa. If you're taking medicines that can cause low blood sugar, such as insulin or glyclozide, your doctor may lower your dose of these medicines to prevent hypoglycemia or hypos occurring. And if you're taking dapagliflozin with painkillers, it's okay to take paracetamol, but ask your doctor or pharmacist before taking ibuprofen or aspirin with SGLT2 inhibitor medicines. This is because these medicines can sometimes lower your blood sugar levels. Now, do you stop taking SGLT2 inhibitors if you become unwell? It is best practice to use the sick day guidance with these medicines. You should stop taking SGLT2 inhibitors if you become unwell, especially with vomiting, diarrhea or fever, high temperature, or if you are fasting, for example, before an operation or fasting for religious reasons. If you are taking an SGLT2 inhibitor for heart failure, please contact your heart failure specialist for advice about whether to stop these medicines. So what is the sick day guidance? If you are unwell with vomiting, diarrhea, fever, high temperature, sweats and shaking, you should temporarily stop taking the medicines listed below. Blood pressure pills, for example, Ramapril, Lisinopril, Losartan, or medicines ending with Artan or Pril. Diuretics, for example, Fruzamide, Humetanide, Spironolactone. SGLT2 inhibitors, like Canagliflozin, dapagliflozin, empagliflozin, or ertugliflozin, if being used to treat your diabetes or kidney disease, and other diabetic medications such as metformin. Don't stop taking your insulin if you have diabetes, but you must increase the number of times you check your blood sugar levels. If they run too high or too low, please seek medical advice. Though you can restart any medicines you have temporarily stopped when you are better, but if you remain unwell after 48 hours, seek medical advice. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see new videos that are posted every week. And hit the notification bell if you want to get notified about new videos. And please make a comment in the comment section to tell me what you enjoyed about this video or what topics you'd like to learn more about. You can also check out my other video on metformin or my playlist. Thank you for watching.